Continue with the theme for the festival, which is to glorify the Lord and chant His holy name. This is one verse from the second canto, first chapter, first God step in God realization. It's a response by one of the questions from the sages of Nambu Saranya about actually what is the duty of a man to about to die. And the answer is everyone's about to die. We all have what is called time cancer. We all have time cancer. <laughs> Can time will give you the diseased and at one point. <laughs> and we have to say goodbye to this place. And some of us may not want to go, but others will be eager to go. So the idea of this class is to get you the eager to go. <laughs> <laughs> and all the classes that we give, <laughs> not just this one. <laughs> you don't want to hang around here. You know, there's that famous rock and roll song is, I can't go, no satisfaction. <laughs> and I try, and I try, and I try. <laughs> so uh, we should learn from such great sages <laughs> to give us the, the philosophy in a really direct way. <laughs> but here, we can get it in a concentrated in a very clear way. Tasman Bharata Sarvatma Tasman Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavanishwaro Hari Bhagavanishwaro Hari Shrota Vyakirti Davyascha Shrota Vyakirti Davyascha Smarta Vyascha Tasman Bharata Sarvatma Tasman Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavanishwaro Hari Kirtita Vyascha, Smarta 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 Vyascha, Vyascha, Vyas Chaita Tabayam Smarta Vyascha 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 Tabayam Sm
Tasmat. Tasmat. For this reason. For this reason. Bharata. Bharata. O descendant of Bharat. O descendant of Bharat. Sarvatma. Sarvatma. The super soul. The super soul. Bhagavan. Bhagavan. The personality of Godhead. The personality of Godhead. Ishvara. Ishvara. The controller. The controller. Hari he. Hari he. The Lord. The Lord. Who vanquishes all miseries. Who vanquishes all miseries. Stota Vya is to be heard. Is to be heard. Kirti Tavya to be glorified. Cha also. Smarta Vya to be remembered. Cha and it's Chata. One of one who desires. Avayam. Freedom. Okay, this is Sukadev Goswami responding to uh, Maharaj Pariksha's two questions. What is the duty of a man about to die? And one, what, what should one remember uh, at the time of death? Mm -hmm. And here are mentions here. O descendant of King Bart, one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about glorify and remember the personality of Godhead who is the super soul, the controller and savior <coughs> of all miseries. Please repeat, O descendant of Bart. O descendant of Bart. One who desires to be free. One who desires to be free. From all miseries. From all miseries. Must hear about. Must hear about. Glorify. Glorify. And also remember. And also remember. The personality of the personality of Godhead. Who is the super soul? Who is the super soul? The controller. The controller. And the savior from all miseries. And the savior from all miseries. The verse kind of sums up what Krishna's relationship is. One who glorifies him and remembers him. There's no miseries. Uh, there is, in other words, everything becomes wonderful simply by remembering Krishna and glorifying Krishna. In the previous verse, Sri Sukadeva Goswami has described how the foolish, materially attached man are wasting their time in the improvement of material conditions of life by sleeping, indulging in sex life, developing economic conditions, and maintaining a band of relatives who are to be vanquished in the air of oblivion. So here, Prabhupada gets right to the point. He that uh, this material world is made up of living entities who are sim simply trying to improve their material condition. Yeah. That's the whole focus in material life, or life in general, you might say, in this world. People are always trying to make the situation better, to find ways to enjoy in different, in different ways and to somehow or other be free from the sufferings that come by way of living in this material world. But all we can do, we can see that is this have become successful? People have been doing it from time immemorial. That people are dying, people are getting diseased, people are suffering in so many different ways. The economic, social, and political situations are always causing people so much anxiety. So we can see simply by our own observation that this process of trying to improve material civilization has been going on since the beginning of this civilization, but where's the improvement? Well, you might say, well, you know, now we have cars, we have airplanes, we have computers, so many ex uh, uh, electronic devices, but has that improved the quality of life? Are people happy? You can give people all these things, or they can produce all these things, but you can't produce happiness. Without happiness, all of the things that you have, or try to have, are simply an another source of your misery, that's all. So happiness is really, when you look at it, the goal of life, how to become happy. When people think, as it says here, they're always engaged in various material activities and keep
keeping a large group of relatives around so they can feel secure. See, the idea is having friends and relatives that give you some kind of security. Oh, I have my friends. I have my contacts. I have my relatives. And then people have this false sense of security. But, you know, a little mosquito comes along and bites the guy and he dies of malaria. <laughs> Where's his friend, relatives and friends can help him? So no one can save anyone in this material world, no matter how hard or how elaborate the arrangements are made, simply by accumulating more and getting more and more, we might say, so-called friends and favorable relatives. I find, at least in my own experiences, relatives are not favorable. <laughs> They find out it's all the time it's like that. Especially if you're a devotee, they become more unfavorable. <laughs> so yeah, so what's this the idea of creating all these uh, friends and relatives? It's just, you can't even really manage your own affairs because they want to manage it for you. <laughs> because they think they know what's best for you and they don't even know what's best for themselves speaking about knowing what's best for you. So this endeavor, as it says in the Shastras, is Shrama Eva Hi Kevala. It just produces a lot of a activity that simply wastes. Just like if you see a monkey, you know, if you're in India, you see monkeys, they jump all around. As soon as they come near people, people, you know, take a stick or they, you know, push him away somewhere. Nobody likes the monkey because he jumps all around and makes a lot of noise and, and he's usually looking for something to steal from you. He uses your glasses or your lunch. <laughs> and so the you know, monkeys are what we say per persona non grata. <laughs> and so, but people who are monkey-like, they jump around, they make a lot of noise and they just cause everybody problems and so it's the same thing. They, they look like monkeys, some of them, too. Anyway, well that's another story. <laughs> because if you act like an animal, you start looking like that animal you're acting like. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah it says that in the Shastras, too. That in the men will look more like, what we say, women will look more like witches, and the men will look like, I don't know, I can't remember what they were, something like that some kind of devils or something. <laughs> so, when you start acting according to the lower modes and animals who have similar characteristics, you start developing facial features and bodily features that look similar to animals. <laughs> and you see someone walking down the street, you think, yeah, that guy belongs in the zoo, you know. <laughs> So, you know, people are, well, of course we feel sorry for them because we know that they're an illusion. But the problem is, is they think they're right, and that's the problem. They think they have the answer to life. Because material life teaches you that you haven't got the answer yet, but if you keep trying, you'll get it. Yeah, that's material life. Uh, people are always lamenting about what happened in the past. They're always planning, trying to do something now in the present so it could be better in the future. And so they're always dreaming about the future. So they, they lament about the past and they dream about the future. And the present is just preparing for the future, which is just going to be like the past. <laughs> And that's just the way, that's material life like that. Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, uh, let the past that sleeps near the future dream at all, but act in times that are with thee, and progress ye shall call. In other words, the only time is now. There's only one time, it's now. This particular moment where you are right now conscious of what's going on, that is the only reality. The past you can learn from, the, the future you can, 
you can, if you live in the present, you will actually create the future according to how you live in the present. Because the future really is based on what happens in the present. So every moment is the present and the future becomes the present. But as you prepare for the future, and it becomes the present. What do we prepare for the future? To hear and chant the glories of the Lord more and more. So here, Prabhupada is just giving us. And then he says here, be engaged in materialistic activities. The living soul entangles himself in the cycle of, lo of the law of fruit of actions. Fruit of actions means I perform an activity and I want to get a result that is favorable. That's fruit of activities. So just like there are sweet fruits and there are bitter fruits. So in this material world, there are two types of results. Something desirable and something undesirable. Now you see, everyone tries for something desirable. No one, look, no one plans to be miserable. No one gets up in the morning and say, today I'm going to be really miserable. That's my plan. <laughs> everyone is thinking, you know, this day will be better than yesterday. <laughs> I have my plans. And so this goes on. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Now this goes on as hope. But what does it say? They hope against hope. Struggling, struggling, struggling just to found, squeeze out a, a little drop of enjoyment. And if they get some sex life, they think, oh, wow, here it is, I found it. But then all the miseries that come with it after that, and that's another thing. <laughs> they say those who have sex life, they don't want it, and those who don't have it, they want it. Yeah. That's good for brahmacharis. Always remember that. If those have it, they don't want it. And those that don't have it, they want it. So remember that. That's a verse, actually. It's a Bengali verse. that I, I forgot it. Krishna Prabhupada quotes it all the time. <laughs> yeah, so this is the material. Well, you might think, well, you know, I'm a brahmachari. i got to sleep on a floor. I eat, have to eat kitchri, and it's not always good to, every day. It's, sometimes it's burnt, and sometimes it's... They don't make it the way I like it. <laughs> and you know, life is, and look at the materialists, they got nice cars and their girlfriends are smiling at them. And, and they're thinking of so many nice things and he's gonna enjoy later on. Forget it, it's an illusion. <laughs> His enjoyment is, <laughs> and there's a, they got these clubs in uh, Australia because one of the biggest crimes in the world is internal organs. You've heard about that? What they do is they, these men, they go into clubs and they meet these girls and they get so intoxicated. A girl takes them to the hotel and they, she gives them some kind of drug and then a guy comes along and he takes out his, uh, his liver or his, um, you know, what they, what's that other thing? kidneys, yeah, and then when the guy wakes up, he only has one kidney, <laughs> and he's got a half a liver or something like that, and then that's big money. That's a big, big operation. They do that all the time. And the guy getting, so you just see the materialists are trying to enjoy, and what, what's their enjoyment? They lose half of their body, you know. <laughs> So, you know, it's just the way the material world is. The more you try to enjoy, the more you actually suffer. And that's what Pallad Maharaj says, if you want to be happy, do one thing. And this is an entry. He says, don't try to be happy. Yeah. That's actually a very, you should write that on the wall. <laughs> if you want to be happy, do one thing. Don't try to be happy. Just try to serve. If you try to serve, you will be happy. If you try to be happy, you might not be able to find out how to do that. <laughs> but if you know the secret, the secret is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord and serve. That's the platform of happiness because it's, the na it's our nature. It's not our nature to enjoy this material world because our nature is spiritual and everything in this world 
is ephemeral or what we say temporary. So Prabhupada goes on to say, this entang entails the chain of death in 8,400,000 species of life. The aquatics, the vegetables, the reptiles, the birds, the beasts, the uncivilized man. And then again, the human form, which is the chance for getting out of the cycle of fruit of activities. Therefore, if one desires freedom from this vicious cycle, then one must cease to act like a karmi, or enjoyer, of the results of one's work, good or bad. One should not do anything, either good or bad, on his own account. Good point. One should not do anything. One should simply act in devotional service. And that is called transcendental goodness. And there's nothing personal about it. As soon as we try to gain something in a, what we say a personal <coughs> way from anything we do, we create this mentality which blocks our ability to be happy. We simply act for the pleasure of the Lord or the devotees and engage in the varieties of activity and devotional service. That is susukam kartavavyayam, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Or it is, as Rishabde said, nayam deho deho bhajan nirloke kastan karma arati vid bhujan jay tapo divyam putakadiena sarvam tasmad yugam brahma sokam tvanantam brahma sokyam. What is brahma sokyam? Brahma means transcendental or spiritual and sokyam means happiness. That happiness that is anantam, eternal. It, 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 when it begins, it just continues to grow. Mm. Okay, so here, let me continue here. This process of doing work well, let's see. One should not do anything, either good or bad, on his own account, but one must execute everything on behalf of the Supreme Lord, the ultimate proprietor of everything that be. This process of doing work is re recommended in the Bhagavad Gita 9.27, where in, in instructions is given to, for working on the Lord's account. Therefore, one should first of all hear about the Lord. So here's the beginning of devotional service. One should hear, and the hearing, hearing, hearing. So when we come full in the process of hearing, then actually as we're hearing, we're actually becoming purified through that sound vibration because transcendental sound vibration actually goes to the soul and awakens the attachment to the Lord, or attraction to the Lord, and eventually <coughs> One wants to serve the Lord. So hearing is the first principle of devotional service. But it's not like, well, I heard for enough, now I don't have to hear anymore, no. One has to continue to hear continuously. But as one reaches a certain stage of hearing, chanting becomes the next feature. And that means one wants to speak about the Lord. One wants to chant the glories of the Lord. One wants to tell others about the glories of the Lord. So you can see, if you have sufficiently heard, you develop this mood of wanting to glorify, speak about the Lord. It comes in that process. Okay. When one is perfectly scrutinizingly heard, one must glorify his acts, referring to Krishna, and deeds, and thus it will become possible to remember constantly the transcendental nature of the Lord. Hearing about and glorifying the Lord are identical with the transcendental nature of the Lord. So this is very important. So when you hear and you glorify the Lord, you're actually associating with the Lord. And as you develop that, that association becomes what we say, realized. You can actually feel the presence of the Lord as your consciousness transforms towards the Lord simply by hearing about Him and glorifying Him. And Prabhupada said, by doing so, one will always be in association of the Lord. Wow, isn't that wonderful? That's good association. 
Does anybody disagree with that one? <laughs> I mean, we look for association in this world, and we find people who we feel that, that really resonate with us. But Krishna can resonate with everybody. <laughs> And so as we hear and chant more the glories of the Lord, we can actually feel the association and presence of the Lord. And what is the result? This brings freedom from all sorts of fear. And here's the point of the whole verse. Mm. And uh, Okay, we'll go on and then we'll speak a little about that. The Lord is the super soul present in the hearts of all living entities. And thus, by the above hearing and glorifying the process, the Lord invites the association of all in His creation. He's inviting everyone into His association. This process of hearing about and glorifying the Lord is applicable for everyone. Prabhupada makes that point. No one is exempt from the process. Even Lord Chaitanya took two dogs back to Godhead in different leelas. And so even a dog, Prabhupada even writes that when he speaks about the glories of the Lord, even a dog can chant Hare Krishna. Lord <laughs> yeah. Chaitanya actually got two dogs to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> they're long stories, I don't know if we have time then. But they're, they're there, one's in the Chaitanya Bhagavan, and the other one's in Chaitanya Charitamrita, how Lord Chaitanya actually got one dog to dance. <laughs> on his hind legs with his arms up and he was chanting and then he just fell over and then he died and then an airplane came from the spiritual world picked up the dog and took him back <laughs> it's mentioned in Chaitanya Bhagavan yeah? so if dogs can go back I guess we should have a chance too right <laughs> I mean that's our that's our destiny okay so the process of hearing about and glorifying the lives from everyone, whoever they may be, and will lead one to the ultimate success in everything in which one may be gauged by providence. Hmm. There are many classes of human beings, the fruit of workers, empiric philosophers, mystic yogas, and ultimately the unalloyed devotees. For all of them, one and the same process is applicable. So Prabhupada wants to make it clear this process works for everyone. And one will, if they follow the process, they will achieve success. So here again, Prabhupada mentions, everyone wants to be free from all kinds of fear. And everyone wants the fullest extent of happiness in life. The process, the perfect process for achieving this here and now is recommended in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the uttered by such a great authority as Sri Sukadeva Goswami. By hearing about and glorifying the Lord, all of a person's activities become molded in spiritual activities and thus all conceptions of material miseries become completely vanquished. So here we have the ultimate understanding. And what even that now, we might say, and Prabhupada also says, everyone in this material world is affected by fear. So what is fear? This is a good question. What is actually fear? Fear means two. The number two. What does that mean? It means that if you see something outside of Krishna, that's fear. There's nothing outside of Krishna. There's two things. There's Krishna and Krishna's energy, and Krishna's energy works under the control of Krishna. So one who sees Krishna and Krishna's energy and sees Krishna also as the controller of his energy, then there's no fear. Because nothing can happen without the arrangement of Krishna. Either Krishna allows things to happen or he makes things happen. So you might say, well, Sometimes he allows the devotees to be put into a fearful condition. But that sometimes is there in order to bring that devotee to a higher stage of Krishna consciousness. But ultimately fear, as, as mentioned with the other anarthas in material energy, is just a conception of mind. I'll tell you a story about fear. Would you like to hear it? 
Okay. This was told to me by Sachi Nandana Maharaj. I gave a class when I was in Radhadesh just this year for the Radhadesh Mellows. And I spoke about fear. And then I spoke to Maharaj after and he said, oh, I have a story to tell you. I said, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> because, um, and he explained. There was one little town and uh, one man was walking in the town and he saw this man standing at the very outskirts of the town and he looked very big and he was dressed all in black. So he walks over to the man, and is very strange looking. He says, I never saw you before, who are you? And the man lifts his mask up, he says, I'm death. I've come to take 500 people in this town within the next month. The man's real shocked. <laughs> so, he immediately leaves and he starts telling everybody in the town as much as he can that 500 of us are going to die in the next month. So everybody's getting, you know, fearful. So at the end of one month, 5,000 people died, not 500. And so the same man, he's still alive, and he goes to the, he still sees that, and that man is still standing at the, he comes and he says, well, you know, you said you were going to take 500, but you took 5,000. He said, yes, 4,500 died because of fear. Yeah. People are, even today, are dying because of fear. As we speak now, the media is poisoning people with all kinds of fearful mentalities. And when you get fearful, the mind becomes distorted and disrupt. You can't think straight. And it also affects the physical form also. But fear is debilitating and ultimately can cause death. <laughs> so a devotee is what we say, abhayam. Mm -hmm. We take shelter of Srila Prabhupada. His, his name was A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. A.C. means Abhayam. Abhayam Charana. Abhay. Abhay his name was. Abhay Charana. One who fearlessly takes shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. So for a devotee, we can be free from fear if we take shelter of the Lord. But here's the process by hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So we have these festivals on the weekends and we concentratedly hear and chant and associate with devotees. But that should be something that gives us a boost. It's not just something we do and then we go back to our other ways of forgetting about hearing and chanting and do other. No, we should be hearing and chanting as it says, Satatam kirtayanto mam gitantasta tadavridaha that one should hear and chant the glories of the Lord 24 hours a day. Maharaj, get real. How is it possible? <laughs> Practice. It's your nature. That's your nature. To hear and chant the glories 24 hours a day. That's you. But... We haven't been, we've been conditioned by this material world to do and think in other ways. So, Prabhupada said, the process of devotional service is simply practice. If you want, if you want to be a preacher, read. The more you read, the more you can preach. If you want to be good at chanting, chant more. <laughs> That's all. Chant more and more and more, and you'll see, you'll start to perfect the quality of your chanting. If you want to be good at doing a particular service for the deities, practice that. Learn the science of that service, read books about it, hear from people who know it, and you become expert. Whatever you want to do, especially in Krishna conscious, you can, be, you can do it if you simply focus. That's all. <laughs> 
But here, here's the essential focus, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord as much as we can. And that's our only business. And Prabhupada would always say that, yeah. That's our only business, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And if everyone is doing that, and more and more people are doing that, then it's Vaikuntha, <laughs> the spiritual world. Then there's no problems. And material energy is, is conspicuous by its absence. In other words, you don't even notice the material energy anymore. So we want to practice that more and more, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. It's like I was in India just this year in March. So I was in Mumbai and I met some of my friends from the temple in Mumbai. So he invited me to his house. He's a grihasta. He has one very nice grown-up son. And he was telling me, he was saying, every akadasi, they get together and they chant he gets all of the devotees he can. I mean, there's a large group of them. It's a big congregation. And they chant, they, they do it together, 32 rounds on the codice. On uh, near Jala codice, they chant uh, 192 rounds. Haridas Thakur. <laughs> on near Jala codice, they chant 192 rounds. And. Um, was one other, and, and uh, no, every Akadasi they chant 64 rounds, I'm sorry. Uh, near Jell they chant 192 rounds, and uh, once a month they get together and do 32 rounds together. So he's always organizing these Japa programs to get people together, and they just, they, they come together at two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> especially on uh, near Jal. <laughs> and then they chant the whole day all the way through the night, and then they have prashad too. I mean, I mean, they have prashad, not for near Jal, but for the other codices they have prashad. And, then people, and they also do some bhajans in between. And they spent the whole day, I mean, 24 hours, that's all. <laughs> Just hearing and chanting and associating and doing that. So we do that, I mean, we're doing that this weekend a little bit more. But that's the, that's the ultimate goal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you gave the form and he said, chant, dance, and when you feel tired, take a little prasadam and then chant again. <laughs> so if you could do that whole cycle, you just chant for a long time, and, and when you're chanting, if you chant and you start getting into it, you, you start to dance. And if you don't feel like dancing, there's a secret how you can dance. What's the secret? Dance. If Prabhupada said when you dance, you'll become happy. So automatically, when you, even if you don't feel like dancing, dance. Last night I saw that there was one person just sitting there and he looked like he wanted to, you know, go to sleep or something. So I said, and I just said, okay. I got him to get up. And, and then after a while he was smiling. <laughs> Soon as you start dancing, you start feeling happy. It's because it's natural. The process works like that. So chant, dance, take prasadam, and then chant, dance, take prasad, chant, dance, and take prasadam, and then go back to Godhead. Sounds impractical, doesn't it? <laughs> but that's our process. <laughs> because at the time of death, when if we are fully engaged in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord throughout our life. To remember Krishna will be so easy. It'll be just natural. But those who don't do it, it'll be difficult to remember Krishna. <laughs> okay, any questions? Yeah. Hare Krishna, thank you for the lecture. I just said say one thing, don't go because I have some Mahapurushanam before you leave, so stick around to the end. <laughs> from uh, my understandings from before this class, I know that there are services that you do out of uh, more reasons. One is duty, one is uh, out of love, one is out of 
depression, Hap happiness, happiness, and one is out of anxiety, fear, fear. and fear. Yeah. So therefore, isn't fear still good? Yeah, but that's for children. When you're dealing with grown-ups, you, you should be—they shouldn't be motivated by fear. A child, we will say, well, if you don't do this, you won't get, you know, your candy. So he's fearful. Oh, I have to do this. Or if you do don't do this, then you know, <coughs> I'm going to put you in your room and you can't come out. You know. So you use that. You know, you use these fear principles. Parents do that and for little children. But when you're dealing with people who are, you know, grown up in life, it's it's kind of an insult. But there are people who need that because that's the only way they wake up. But the material energy provides enough programs for fear anyway, so <laughs> it's already built in. <laughs> Isn't it good to sometimes have fear of the material world, to want to go back to Krishna, to, to be disgusted and fearful of what is going on here and just want to go back there? Isn't fear actually something that can help in this yeah. situation? Yeah. I just wrote about that the other day. I was saying, when you realize you have nothing to do with this place, then you become a candidate for going back to Godhead. Yeah, but this is, implies fear. Yeah, I mean, padam padam ya vi padam. It's a dangerous place. You could be one. You know, I mean, there's so many stories. I mean, I can tell you one. There was one man. He was a very popular person. He created this mucus-free diet, and he was, uh, you know, it was a fruit diet, just eating mostly all fruit. And so he wrote books, articles, well not books, but mostly articles, and he was doing public perform, uh, public lectures. And then they did a test on his body to see how healthy he was. His health was, you know, 100%, was good. He was in his 40s, and then one day he finished his uh, talk. He came out and he was walking on the street and he slipped on some, there was some oil there on the street. He fell, he hit his head, and he died. So you might say he died healthy anyway. One consolation, he died healthy. <laughs> so what do you know? The point is, what's the, this is the nature of the material world. It's called, the word is precarious. And precarious means uncertain. We don't know. Prabhupada uses that example. He says, here we are walking, he was walking in Denver in one park. He said, this park is so nice, so many beautiful trees and shrubbery and everything. But any minute, there could be a blazing fire and the whole thing will be destroyed. <laughs> any minute, you know, coronavirus can sap one. You know. So the material world is like that. And the disease, disease, you can't even see the guy. He just sneaks up on you. <laughs> it's just the nature of this world. Why is it like that? Well, Krishna actually responds to that question. Why is the material world a place of suffering? Probably Krishna says, because I made it like that. <laughs> so you don't want to stay here. That's right. It's an impetus for getting out. Yeah. But the motivation shouldn't be that, it should be love. Because you know, fear is not a motivation, it's just, it gets you going, but you have to come to a higher stand, yes? Actually, it doesn't work. Well, yeah, it doesn't work for intelligent people. Because they always think somehow I can get around, the, can get around it some way. There's plenty of fear around, but there's no more problems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, what you mentioned is Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he says, the lowest is fear, second is happiness. I, I'll serve the Lord because I'll be happy. Which is a little better, but it's still personal. Higher than that is duty. It's my duty to serve the Lord. Doesn't matter whether I'm going to be happy or not, it's my duty. So that 
as the platform by which devotees should perform devotional service. And that duty type mood will lead you to the highest, that we serve Krishna out of love. So we should be fixed at least on that platform of duty. Happiness comes and goes. And fear is, again, not a, not a, not a motivation at all. So we should know that fear is in the material world and we shouldn't fear serving, uh, doing service for the Lord. And why would you fear serving the Lord? This is what I'm saying that you, and this is how I have oh. to see it. No, no, when serving, uh, devotional service is not part of the material energy. It's transcendental. Yeah, Krishna says, you know, Sudha Sattva, our devotional service is Mam Chaya Uvi Bhacharena Bhakti Yogena Sevati Sagunan Samatityaitam Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpateya. It's above the three modes of material knowledge. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you mentioned that there are two reasons uh, why we become fearful. And that one is that we see things not in connection with Krishna. But what is the other one? Um, no, I said two means to see something separate from Krishna. That's what it means. So that's the, that's the whole definition. If you're seeing something separate from Krishna, then you are in a consciousness where fear can come at any time. Duality. Hmm? Like duality. Yeah, duality, exactly. Prabhupada tells the story when he was in his home and during World War II, he was in this place in Calcutta. And the Germans were bombing the English quarter. And so the sirens went off. And then Prabhupada was there with his family and he had a friend there and his wife had just cooked kachuris for him because <laughs> Prabhupada likes kachuris and so his friend said oh Abai the uh, the sirens are going off we should go to the bomb shelters Prabhupada said you go I'm not I'm gonna stay here and have kachuris <laughs> and then Prabhupada he he, he kind of he kind of mimics the whole thing. Zing, boom. I was hearing the bombs go off and I was thinking, here comes Krishna in the form of a bomb. <laughs> they were seeing Krishna in the form of a bomb. <laughs> of course, we take precautions. It's not like we flaunt the material energy and expect to be fearless. That's foolish. I'm going to walk out in front of a car and it's not going to hit me. <laughs> no, that's foolish. You take precautions, but at the same time, you should know that your shelter is, is Krishna. There's, there's where your shelter is. Your Krishna or Krishna's holy name. Devotional service, that's your shelter. Complete. And, and we should understand that when we are connected with Krishna, then the material energy cannot touch you. It can't. It's not possible. Because Krishna, uh, you, you connect with Krishna, you're above the material energy. The material energy is simply working under his control anyway. Yes. How about the service that is a little bit painful? Oh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives the formula. He says, my dear Lord, what is my happiness in devotional service? My happiness in devotional service is the difficulties that I encounter in your devotional service. That's what he says. Now, we may not be on that platform. What is he saying? I can offer you something then. If it's easy, what am I offering? <laughs> But if when it's difficult, then I, then I have to make some sacrifice. I have to tolerate. What about if it's bad for health? Well, then, it's, then if it's bad for your health, then you should make it. Then you should make it note that you tell your authorities if someone is giving you something that's not good for your health, you make that known. 
Yeah, we shouldn't do anything that's... Uh, I mean, sometimes there's something unavoidable. And you can't, you mean, just like if you're, you're traveling or something and, you, and, and the weather becomes really cold and something. So you have to keep traveling mm, to get to your destination. So sometimes you tolerate something that also may not be good for your health. But if you have a choice, then you uh, think, well, I can always serve in another way. But if there's no choice, then you have to be... You know, there's many times we find ourselves where there's no choice and we just have to do it. But that's a rare occasion. That doesn't happen a lot, uh, all the time. And Krishna doesn't want to put you in a situation where your health becomes, you know, damaged. He doesn't do that. Sometimes it's just the situation comes like that. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Uh, yes, there's a question uh, from the internet from Marcel Malover. <coughs> he says, Thanks you, thank you for inspiring lecture. You mentioned that we should try to serve other devotees instead of striving for our own happiness in order to be really happy. How can we detect that we are somehow or other acting for selfish means, especially even in our attempts of doing spiritual practice? Yeah, and it's always there. Sometimes, even when you try to serve others, there's a, there's a little motivation for that. Just like I'm giving out some sweets now, and then I want everyone to think, oh, he's such a nice person. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but, so if, I, if I'm thinking like that, then, then, then that's, that's motivation. <laughs> so people give donations, you know, in the temples, because I've been in certain temples that People give donations and they want their name put up on a plaque somewhere in the temple. So, you know, Mr. Patel gave $10,000 for the altar, you know. It's like that. Not so much here, but when you, when you go to the West, you find large Indian congregations. And they always have big boards with all the persons giving donations. But that's meant to inspire them. But but some people we want that. They want to be known as, you know, I did something good. So I want some to feel good about, you know, I want people to feel good about me because I did something good. Now that's a motivation. Yeah. So try to forget that and just serve for the sake of service. Okay. Ah, there might be some little thing there, but continue on with your service. You shouldn't think, well, because I, f I have this desire to get something from the service, I won't do the service. No. So you have to continue on with the service anyway. And try to be, you know, what do we say? All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to my spiritual master. All glories to the Lord. So we give credit to the Lord and his devotees. And that helps us to get a little bit free from this personal motivation. <coughs> but once you get fixed in devotional service, you just like to serve. Serving becomes so nice that you don't even care. It's just the idea of service becomes the satisfaction itself. That's the point. There are people who just can't wait to do a service, and they're just eager to serve, always want to serve. And that's Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness, the service is nice. It's enjoyable. And you can tell. If you're asked to do a service you don't like to do, or you have to do it because it's needed, then you can see, am I motivated by my own desires or not? And the Lord will arrange that. He'll put you in a situation just to test you and see if you're attached to you know, getting something from the service, or you're actually willing to serve in any condition. <laughs> Yeah.
Okay. You're asking on behalf of someone else, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll stop here because we don't want to take up too much time. And uh, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. And then we have some...